Hello, everybody. My name is Vanessa, and I'm with Nye House Education Center. If you are not familiar with Nye House, our mission is literacy success for all. Today, I'd like to talk with parents and teachers about how you can do phonological awareness activities around the house or with students online. I'll be giving you quick tips and some strategies so that all children can continue to learn and grow. So let's get started. The latest research is telling us that good readers have a strong foundation in phonological and phonemic awareness. But what do the, these two really big, broad terms mean to us? Well, when I hear the word phonological, I think phonology, and that's the study of sounds. So phonological awareness, simply put, is the understanding that there are sounds in spoken language. Now it has three different levels. It has the word level, words make up sentences. It has the syllable level, meaning words have parts, one part or multiple parts, or at the sound level. And that's the most critical. That's that phonemic awareness. Phonemes are small units of sounds that blend together to make words. When you manipulate sounds, you not only change the pronunciation of the word, but also its meaning. As you can see, I'm in my kitchen today, and I'd like to use some food items and some kitchen appliances to, to do some quick and simple phonological awareness activities with you and your children. I'll be modeling so that you can continue these fun games at home. The first food item that I have is the avocado. Now, I love avocados alone or in salad. So a sentence that I can make up in terms of sentence segmentation is, I like to eat avocados. Now, the cool thing about phonological awareness activities is that you can do them in the dark. You can turn off all the lights in your kitchen and you can dictate a sentence and have your child repeat it to you. Everything at the phonological awareness level is done at the listening level. So once your child listens, hears it correctly, repeats it back to you, you can have them count the number of words in that sentence. So my sentence was, I like to eat avocados. So I would put up a finger for each word in that sentence. I like to eat avocados. You might ask your child, how many fingers do I have up? And they should say, I see five fingers. So how many words are in that sentence? And they should say, there are five words in that sentence. Okay, another food item that I like to have in the kitchen is fresh garlic. I like to cook with it and I especially like it on pizza. So I, my sentence might be, I like fresh garlic on pizza. So I'm gonna put the fresh garlic down and I'll listen for my child, right, to give me the sentence correctly. And then I'll use a finger for every word in that sentence. I like fresh garlic on my pizza. You might ask, how many fingers do you see? And they should say seven. And then, so how many words do you think are in that sentence? Oh, there are seven words because I see seven fingers. Now, the, another cool thing about these activities is that you're also building their oral language skills. You're exposing them to new words and vocabulary, and this is always a plus for any child. Okay, that was seg sentence segmentation. Now let's move on to syllabication or counting syllables and words. Now behind me is my stove. So I might say, okay, a syllable is a word or part of a word made with one opening of the mouth. A syllable has one vowel sound. So in other words, it's just every time my mouth opens, that's a syllable. Behind me, like I said, is the stove. So I'll say stove, repeat, stove. How many times did your mouth open? Stove, oh, stove, one time. You can clap it out or a cool thing to do is have your child put their hand under their chin and say the word, stove. Oh, their chin dropped one time, so that means it's one syllable. Now, above, or I should say on the um, stove, are burners. And so I'll say burners. How many times did my chin drop? Twice. So how many syllables are in that word? Burners. Burners. 
two times. There are two syllables in that word. Finally, there is a microwave above the burners. So if I said to my child, microwave, I'll have them repeat the word and then put their hand under their chin. Microwave. Oh, my chin dropped three times. Or clap it out. Microwave. There are three parts or three syllables in that word. Again, a multi-sensory way of using fingers, putting your hand under your chin, or clapping out syllables or counting words and sentences are really good strategies so that your children can really understand the activities that you do with them. Okay, that's all for today. Please follow us at www.neuhaus.org for more free resources about building the literacy skills of your students. I'll be back tomorrow to talk to you about rhyming and alliteration, and I hope to see you soon.